But see, we can be doing redemptive things in the culture, not tied to any political motivation, tied to the eternal justice of Jesus. And he doesn't want one person to perish. Somebody, can you mind staying up for a little bit longer? Because again, like, I'm not on the front lines every day like Carolyn is. So there's many examples that, that she can give. And I, if you've been in the church, maybe what was it, six or seven years ago when Lourdes came? Yeah. And uh, this was a person that had been homeless. You could just give a quick yeah. uh, story. So um, when I met Lourdes, um, she was just coming out of a shelter for the, uh, domestic violence. And she had uh, two teenage sons and twin daughters. And what had happened was that they were, in, they ended up being put in a high school in Patterson, her sons, um, and they were bullied really badly. Um, and as a result, we ended up connecting them with some resources and got them the help they needed until her sons, you know, they, they persevered and hopefully they're somewhere doing well. But at the end of the day, Lourdes was in need of work, but she came in as a volunteer to help out because she was so pleased with the, the support we'd given her. And um, eventually we hired her as a family partner, i.e. someone who would speak to other moms who might be in the same situation of domestic violence or whatever the need was. Um, and she excelled, um, did extremely well, um, and in the process, she got a call from her dad in, in uh, Puerto Rico that someone had come to visit um, who was actually not come to visit. He'd gone to visit because he was a physician who was working on his, um, he was a surgeon, heart surgeon. So he's dealing with his issues of her father's heart. Long story short, that gentleman ends up being a person that tried to date her when they were in high school, who her father kicked out the house. <laughs> um, so long story short, he connected them, and they started talking, and before you knew it, that flame was revived. She ended up going back to Puerto Rico, getting married, and lives on some nice home on the beach in Puerto Rico. But the Why? Because <laughs> somebody opened the door and said, I'm going to show up every day. Yeah. I don't know when this is going to go right or wrong, but I just know I'm going to do my part. And we're going to open the door and allow people to come in. She went from being homeless yes. to basically being your second in command. Yes, she did. There was so much talent in this person that was being buried under all the problems that she was facing. But if somebody would just give a chance, oh my God, if that's yeah. not the biblical way Amen. that the Lord wants us to interact with people, that doesn't mean you're naive. You know, Carolyn, you've heard every way that people try to game the system. Um, yeah. You know, but that's okay. You know, that's the only way they know how to play the game. But now they're coming into a place that, yes, it's it's a community service center, but it's also based on biblical values. Exactly. And, and that shows to the rest and of the world. so important what you're saying, Pastor, because we meet people all the time. And this is the reality. They don't want us preaching Jesus to them. They have, they've come, they have a need, but this is how they walk away. I felt love. And then that's the opportunity when we say, yes, that's the way Jesus uses us. Right. So that's a much more effective witness than me coming and, you know, giving somebody a Bible that they didn't ask for, but showing the love. Right. And when they walk away, they say, that place, New Destiny, when I walked in there, the love I felt, that's a testimony. Mm -hmm. To the, to the power of God in action. I want to just share a scripture here, Pastor, Please. that um, um, the Lord just has been burning in me. It's from, um, the, from um, Ephesians 1. And I'm going to read a little bit. It's from the Passion Translation. Through our union with Christ, we too have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Before we were even born, he gave us our destiny. That we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. Mm -hmm. That's the word of the Lord for all of us. So we all have a destiny. We, God has already designed a plan. We are the solution to these issues. Um, one of the things Pastor mentioned was summer learning loss. We're way beyond that now. We have had a year of learning loss. 
with, these, with our children. So our children are probably going to emerge from this pandemic at least two to three years behind because they were already behind a year, some of them, before the pandemic. And so I'm just saying, Lord, how, how can we be, how can I be a solution? I believe God is going to deposit in the body of Christ solutions and strategies that are going to help our children overcome these barriers. And I just, I just applaud anybody who's pressing it in prayer in that way. I guarantee you God is going to answer that prayer. Yeah, it's a big need right now. Can you just stay a little longer? Yeah. Can you guys show that video that I gave you? Because the Lord gave, it gives me pictures sometimes about what he's trying to impress upon me. And, and this one really kind of hit home. It's kind of bright, but. You remember this ride when you were down at the amusement park? You're standing up against a wall and it starts spinning. So they're putting their arms out, it's starting to spin, and the bottom, the bottom's dropping. Oh, see that one kid? Oh. And what's holding them in force? It's centrifugal force. It's the spinning that's going on. And now we see she's falling. And that means it's, start, it's stopping. It's, it's slowing down. And now the force of that thing that was holding them is diminishing. So at different rates, they're getting their feet back on the ground again. Is that long girl still stuck up there. And then they're like, hmm. Can I venture out? I don't know. And then boom, she gets pulled back again. And this kid with the arms up in the air, it's like, eventually it all wears off. Thank you, that's it, that, that made the point. So, how does this apply? <laughs> that's what's been going on with us. A big swirl. And you get pinned into position and you get like obsessed by having to look at the next thing and the next website and we're, we're spending more time looking at things than the Bible. Not a good plan, okay? Yes, very good plan to be aware of what's going on, but don't allow your emotions to do what was happening to them in that picture, right? We can't allow ourselves to get pinned into submission to some thought process, whether it's fear, you know, all the different ways the enemies tried to attack us. And don't forget that for a year now, we have not had a normal way of living. Never mind just church services, but not being able to go and get closure at a funeral. There's just so many ways it's impacted our lives. I was so grateful just to get to see Jim McCourt before he passed. Because even there, like we wanted to announce the service, we wanted to let everybody know, but the funeral parlor said, oh no, all you can do is come in, pay your respects, and then you have to leave. Jesus. Right, I know. Like It's just really, this picture I hope stays in your mind. Fight against that force that's trying to pin you in that swirl of whatever the thing is that's trying to consume you and, and just do what the Lord would ask us to do is just go into that sanctuary go into that presence but okay so obviously Carolyn's black I'm white we grew up we didn't really know each other that well but ended up going to the same high school and lived in the same town found out about the other, each other's ministries through John and Cheryl Price right and and there's just been a connection here of I'm looking at the uh, white collar world of Wall Street and she's looking after being in a corporate job at, at right on the, on the front lines of the battle. And there's something we can both bring to the table that will help the bigger cause, okay? Because the people that I work with want to help ministries like Carolyn's but might not know about it or might not have a, a vetting process to know if it's legit or not. But if they trust me, which I hope they do, then they would say, oh, yeah, I would like to learn more about that. 